In this video, we're going to be talking about link chain router chains in this streamlit user interface, doing question answering over documents while link chain chooses automatically the appropriate index to send that question to. We will also talk about the terminal version of the same app. And also we will be talking about how we can set multi prompts and then while the router actually picks the appropriate prompt for your question. So we'll be talking about two different routing chains, one for vector store indexes and one for prompts. Let's begin with the Streamlit web app. I'm going to ask how many pyramids are there? And we have three indexes, Egyptian pyramids, Isaac Newton and Richard Feynman. When we click to ask this question, we see that we are using the Egyptian pyramids index with this question. And the answer is at least 118 Egyptian pyramids. So let's ask what was Newton famous for? And in this case, we are using the Isaac Newton index and we get our answer. Next, let's ask when was Feynman born? Richard Feynman was a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Here we are using the Richard Feynman index and Feynman was born on 1918, year 1918. So this is great. This actually allows you to select, you can upload multiple indexes, create multiple indexes, as many as you within, within reason. And your question automatically is routed to the right, correct chain. And you get answered by querying over that particular chain. I will make all these three of these files, including the streamlit available to connoisseur level Patreon supporters. The link will be in the description. And I will be including just the terminal versions of multi-file and the multi-prompt router chain applications at the aficionado level Patreon supporters. The both links will be in the description. The Streamlit version is a bit rough around the edges. There are all these files are designed to work with PDF documents, but the Streamlit version has a bit of a trouble with it. Let's actually see what's happening. Streamlit only works with uploaded files. I have already uploaded these three files. These files are automatically uploaded to docs folder and then indexes are created in the indexes folder. We are using Chroma DB for indexes. I'm going to go ahead and delete both the docs and the indexes so we can see what's happening. And when I refresh the app, I see that both uploaded files and indexes are empty. API key is automatically set from the environment user environment variable. If you don't have that, there will be an option here to enter it and it will set an environment variable for your OpenAI API key. So now I'm going to load these Richard Feynman, Isaac Newton and Egyptian pyramids text files to the Streamlit interface. Currently it has trouble with PDF files. And when we first load them, we get this error, but actually we have created the indexes. I couldn't figure out why we are getting this error, but if you refresh the page after that, everything's actually fine. Can actually query it what are pyramids and we actually will get an answer i just worked on this for too long and i thought this is good enough and it will give you an opportunity to maybe debug it as you see we are using egyptian pyramids and then the answer is such a like i said it has trouble with dealing with pdf files maybe you can take a look into it the issue is that we can load a pdf file and actually the index is created for that pdf file again we get the same error but we refresh we see that attention is all you need the index is created but when we ask the question, what is attention? And we just say it is difficulty finding that index. This problem doesn't happen in the terminal version. Like I said, I will make the streamlit version available to connoisseur level Patreon supporters, and we will review the code. Maybe you can find a solution and please let me know. And then at another time, I'll try to fix this issue as well. Now let's run the multi-file terminal version of the same app. For this to work, you need to have all your documents, including any PDF documents. This only deals with PDF documents and text documents in the docs folder. And then you just simply run it. Once you run, we will automatically go into create indexes in the working directory. This is some print statement I had. Uh, see, we are creating the indexes, as you see in the working directory, not in indexes folder. Richard Feynman, Egyptian pyramids, and attention is all you need. After that, we can query it. When we ask a question, such as what is attention and AI, we are entering the multi-retrieval QA chain. And as you see, we are picking the attention as all you need AI paper with this query. And this is the answer to that query. We can ask another question. So how many pyramids are there? Again, we are entering a multi-retrieval QA chain and we are using the Egyptian pyramids index and we are getting the answer right here. So the terminal version works perfectly, both with PDF documents. I just want to mention something that is important. 
Because with the router chains, we are initializing the retrievers, retriever descriptions and retriever names. But I am creating the retriever descriptions dynamically from within a for loop. And it relies on the description saying good for answering questions about the file name minus the file extension. So before you put your documents into the docs folder, make sure to name them appropriately so that Langchain will have easier time. For example, when I uploaded the attention is all you need paper, it didn't have this parentheses. It has to be able to understand your question and related to the related to the name of the file. And attention is all you need was not enough. So I just added AI paper. So when you ask a question about AI, now it is a tendency to go to this index, the index which has created. So all I'm saying is that make sure that you name them, name your files descriptively. You can put as much detail as possible. This will just make it easier for Langchain to match the indexes to the queries. Now I have tested this for, I actually did have a live stream about this. I'll put the link in the description if you want to watch the live stream while testing this app. I have actually used upwards of almost 10 different files and indexes, and it had no problem actually routing to the right index. I haven't tested it for any more than 10 indexes, but I'm sure this will break down at some point, but I know that it worked well with at least 10. Now let's take a look at the multi-prompt. In multi-prompt file, we have a bunch of templates for prompts. In this case, this is a physics template. You are a very smart physics professor. You're great at answering questions about physics in a concise manner. If you don't know the answer, say you don't know. We have another prompt for math, biology, English, computer science, Python, accountant, lawyer, teacher, engineer, psychologist, scientist, economist, and architecture architect template. So we have quite a lot of templates on I believe 15 of them. And we have the infos forum, each one saying good for answering questions about whatever the prompt is about and its related template. Then we just simply initiate this with the necessary templates and then let Langchain choose which prompt is best for our question. We run this and ask a question such as what is DNA? We enter again the multi-prompt chain and this will route our question to the appropriate prompt automatically we'll use that prompt. It chose the biology and it answered that prompt. So this is pretty cool. Let's ask another question. What are doubly linked lists? This is a computer science algorithm concept. Let's see if we're able to ask it to the computer science. Yep, it chose the computer science and it says double linked lists are type of data structure as it is a data structure. Let's ask another question. How can I save for retirement? Remember we both have an accountant and an economist. Let's see which it'll pick. It actually picked an economist and it actually gave you an answer. Let's ask another question. How can I prepare for tax season? I'm just wondering if it'll pick the accountant this time. Yeah, this time it picked the accountant and answers. Like I say, these are AI generated answers. Do not rely on them 100%. Take it as advice that is AI generated. Always consult with a professional for real life decisions. Of course, AI can generate non-factual and hallucinatory answers. Please always remember that. And if you build apps using any of these, let your users know that they are dealing with AI generated content and let them know that AI can generate non-factual and hallucinatory content. Now let's review the code. Let's begin with the Streamlit interface. Here are all our imports. And we define a main function. We write with sd.title, the name of our app. And here is how you can actually create coloring with Streamlit, as you see within quotation marks, we say colon blue and in square brackets, what you need to say. This is how we were able to create the title in blue. After that, we are checking for OpenAI API key from the environment variables. If not, we are setting the OpenAI API key environment variable. If the environment variable automatically exists, then you just pull it from there and type that API key successfully set. We set embeddings to open AI embeddings and text splitter to recursive character text splitter. We're setting it to 500 character chunk size and chunk overlap to 20. We now we need to initialize the retrievers, the retriever description, the retriever names, and we are doing this with st.session state. And we are doing a check for that to make sure that it doesn't exist before we initialize them. This is what Langchain will use as the names and the descriptions to, to see which retriever which index it was going to use looking at the query that you entered. We are checking for indexes there in docs there and creating them if they don't exist, right? if they're if they're not already created. 
And we do check for if the session state initialized. If not, we get all the indexes from the indexes directory. And then we actually set all of them. We append them. Because if we are re reloading our app, we want to just check all the indexes and append all the descriptions, which we are doing dynamically. And we are on the sidebar displaying the files and the documents, as you see, such as like this, so that we can see if all our which files we have uploaded and which files have turned into indexes. I guess this is just informative, and also good for debugging purposes. And then we allow users to upload text or PDF files and then we actually load them and save them to the to the docs folder and then we check all the file names in the docs directory and if they already exist we just continue okay we just load them essentially which we are doing here if the indexes exist we immediately load them but if they don't exist then we actually with the spinner check the text files and pdf files and we actually split them and create documents out of them and we store that to a doc variable. Loading the text files and PDF files is a bit different. We are using PyPDF loader and we are loading and splitting them page by page versus with the text files, we are using the text splitter, which is set to 500 character size. You can feel free to change these if you like. And then we check if the doc is not none, which, we, that, which means we have successfully loaded our documents. Then we are creating a retrieval using Chroma. And then we are creating the retrievers, appending the retriever name minus the file extension plus the description. Good for answering questions about whatever the file name is. That's why I make sure your file names are descriptive. And then we just we just print a success message saying that those indexes are created. Then we are initializing our chain with multi-retrieval QA chain from retrievers. We are using OpenAI, which means we are using text of inches 003. And then we are giving it the retriever names retriever descriptions and say retrievers we are setting the verbose true so that it will print to the terminal the necessary the link chain related stuff then we say ask a question and we take user input we have a button if that button is clicked if there are no retrievers we say to the user to upload files otherwise we are using string io to actually get the output of the chain when we run it as you see chain.run response is actually what the answer is going to be and the output we get the buffer dot get value so that we can actually to the user which index that we are using let me show you what i mean when we ask a question such as who was newton the router chain picks which route which index to use and that what we are printing here isaac newton with the query is actually the result of this output the reason we are doing this is because this chain and run with chain dot run actually it automatically does a lot of printing to the terminal in the terminal version so we are using this io string.io and the buffer options to actually separate those two and we are actually using regex to match whichever line has the query in it as you see with this which it has query and then we extract that and then we actually write that match group dot one okay because if we do find a match then we say we are using the following index and print that line otherwise no match found and then we write the answer is the response okay i hope this was clear you can also watch the live stream i go more deep into it after that we just run our main uh, file that is it and to initiate your streamlit app you just say streamlit run and the name of your file that's it once you run this it will automatically pop out in your browser like this and you can use it now let's, let's take a look at the same multi-file question answer over documents with the link chain router, but the terminal version, we are doing our necessary imports. Pay attention, we are using PyPDF for PDFs. We are setting the doc directory, the directory. Our embeddings is going to be OpenAI embeddings. Retrievers, retriever descriptions and retriever names initialized to an empty list. Our text splitters, the curtis of character splitter with chunk size 500 characters and 20 overlap. And then we go over all the files in the directory. We first set the doc to none. And then if those file names exist, we actually load them. Otherwise, we check if it's a text file, then handle the Unicode errors while loading the file. You do want to do this because sometimes you'll get an error and we split it. And otherwise, if it's a PDF file, we load it with 
Pi PDF and load and split. The text files will be split into 500 character chunks and PDFs are going to be split to page by page. And then we make sure doc is no longer none because we originally set it to none. But then as we retrieve our files and split them, we have created the doc, so it's not going to be none anymore. So then we create a retriever from Chrome or from documents. Okay, so this is creating our indexes. Then we persist them to the disk and then load the retriever as the retriever. And then we append the retrievers to retriever names with the file name minus the extension. And retriever description is dynamically generated with good for answering questions at the file name. That's why your file name needs to be descriptive. Then we are loading the chain with retriever names, retriever descriptions, and retrievers. Then we can ask questions. This is to this will ask a single question. That's why I comment this out. But if you say while through and print chain.run then you'll be able to ask it multiple questions. And the reason why in the streamlit version, as you saw, we are separating the response and the output with stream.io because the result of the stream chain.run will print whatever index we're using plus the response automatically. There's no way of dis distinguishing it. That's why I had to think about how I can, how I can isolate the index name using a string IO. And I was successful using regex. It's actually pretty cool. You can use it for other applications as well. And finally, the multiprompt. This is pretty simple. You import the multiprompt chain. Again, OpenAI, we are using TextDaVinci 003, and you define a bunch of templates, however many you like. I've tested it, this many templates, and it works well. You can try to have more. Just make sure that you have your prompt infos. You have to make sure that your prompts and the infos are defined in the syntax. After that, you initialize your chain with all the prompt infos. And then you can now, with the while through loop, you can get a question and then run the chain with that question and automatically the appropriate prompt will be selected. Like I said, the terminal files will be available to aficionado level Patreon supporters. Link will be in the description and the streamlit version will be available to connoisseur level Patreon supporters. Like I said, the streamlit version has a few hiccups. I'll try to take a look at it when I find some more time. But feel free to debug it yourselves and let me know. There's some cool ideas such as checking the API directly from the environment and writing it to an environment key. I think this will give you some ideas on how to use LangChain with Streamlit and for other applications as well. Also, if you like to talk about this kind of stuff, please join our Discord channel. We have a great community there. The link will be in the description. And uh, like I said, I did a live session, live streaming session, testing this app. You can also check that as well. Link will be in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.